fight between Jorge Masvidal and Tony Ferguson. situation with this fighter you're potentially playing with fire you're trying to pass the guard here but a nice job by the bottom fighter defensive bottom fighter did a fantastic job of following with his hips making sure he blocked any attempt to get past his guard man this is some serious ground and pound here dc he's not just staying busy for the sake of staying busy these strikes are doing damage oh yeah no pity pat to this guy this guy's trying to land and he's trying to land effective strikes that shot blocked by Ferguson. Oh, nice offering there. Just over 20 total strikes have found the mark for Jorge Game Red Masvidal. Blocks the shot. Big punch from the clinch. Back and forth we go. Oh! What a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves this moment. Go finish this fight. Oh! Straight right. Oh, looked like he might have been in range, but misses with the kick. Five minutes in the books. All right, round two. Oh, what a punch. All right, so a good job defensively by him here as he raises the guard and prevents any damage. Shades of James Tony, always seeing things coming at him. He's such a great defensive fighter. Nice counter shot there. Oh, he lands another strike to the body, really starting to connect on a lot of shots to the midsection, and these will take their toll as this man. Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to take that finish down now. to establish that jab. Oh, timely hook. Ah, oh, that jab hurt him. Slips the punch. 46 
total strikes have now landed for Tony Ferguson. And the connection rate pretty good, 44. Oh! He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his shoulder hurt very bad. Oh, nice. The problem with rolling leg locks in MMA, man, is you get beat up, especially if you're a little bit hurt. And he's out. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. No, he's on top of him looking for a finish. Pretty good work with the ground and pound here by Ferguson. Trying to establish that jab once again. 90. Whoa! He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. Oh, spinning back fist. He didn't telegraph that one at all. Ferguson's got the tie clinch now. Look at how he drives. Wow. He was hurt. Serve him up. Go get him. Oh! Oh! And just like that, the fight is over. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. What a fight. Beautiful shot to end the fight right there. It couldn't have landed much more flush than it did. And I'm not even sure the opponent saw it coming, quite frankly. So, near perfect execution on the strike that ultimately results in the KO here tonight. Well, he's going to enjoy watching this one back. Let's take a look at the replay of the knockout just a moment ago. It was right hand after right hand after right hand. Finally, he found the one that hit the exact sweet spot that ended his opponent's night. So there he is, the undisputed UFC welterweight champion. What a finish he turned in here tonight as he gets it done by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean's called to stop for this contest at four minutes, one second of the second round. Declaring the winner by knockout and new undisputed UFC welterweight champion of the world, Tony Ferguson. All right, so he dedicated decades of his life to this very goal, and he is now the UFC champion. No one can ever take that away from him. Yeah, man, you gotta take a lot of confidence from staying so committed. Coming up next, this highly anticipated matchup for the UFC middleweight division title. Sometimes when you catch a guy cold before he's had a chance to get going in the fight, it can have a bigger effect. It certainly did here tonight.
And there is the UFC middleweight champion. Hard to be much more impressive than that on the biggest of stages. A knockout win to leave as the middleweight king. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean is going to stop to this contest at 56 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by knockout and still the undisputed UFC middleweight champion of the world, Paulo the And still the king of the 185 pounders. There he is, the undisputed UFC middleweight champion after the knockout tonight in his title defense. And that's got to feel pretty good. There were a lot of people backing the number one contender coming in here tonight. But he certainly muted all of that noise and then some. The celebration is on in the corner. Congratulations to the reigning defending, still undisputed UFC middleweight champion of the world.
Coming up next, a matchup for the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. so far. around for too long. Good movement by him here, transitioning very well on the ground tonight. Step for step, he's staying with his opponent in every transition. Teixeira is right back to the full mount. Continues to attack here. We'll see if he can set up the arm ball. with these ground and pound strikes here. And if you're the opponent, you got to intelligently defend or the referee's going to stop. You got to defend. But you can see him now starting to gain posture and the intensity at which he's throwing these ground strikes is starting to improve. It's starting to elevate because he knows that he can get the finish. Oh, well, it looks like he's transitioning to an armbar. You cannot stay in the guard of these great jiu-jitsu guys. Attack an armbar. You gotta recognize that when a guy starts to put his feet on your hips, you gotta move him off and you gotta cover. You can't be off to an angle. Now he falls back into the finishing position. The sheer will is, is really remarkable to watch. All right, full guard here, DC. What does he need to do to improve position? Well, he's gotta start to build his posture, get some damage off, move to half guard, which in turn leads to more opportunities for advancement. If you're on the bottom, you got to anticipate those movements the moment he tries to move to the next position. You build a shield, get back to your feet, or dig an underhook to try to get a reversal or a sweep. Look at him whip his hip into that kick. Just missed with the elbow there. Nice entry into the finish direct. He's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. The Kimura is not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually nice makes you tap. trying to control posture, unable to do so. And now, he's in a lot of danger. He's got to grab that head, or he's going to get blasted. Well, you know he's comfortable fighting off his back. 
All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you gotta be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Right, both fighters get up now. Man, has he landed a high volume of strikes here in round two. Definitely picking up the pace after round one. So he got the message from the corner, and now he is taking control of this second round. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? Leg kick. Nice strike. This fight is supposed to be over. And it might not be over now, but it's gonna be over very soon. Able to check the high kick. Look at him drive his shins into his opponent's body with that body kick. Just out of range with that right hand. Well, no surprise, he gets the take down there. Over and over again. The attack is he. Countering, it looks like with a bomb flu choke, or maybe we should call it the OSP now, but trying to get out of the guillotine by submitting his opponent. Incredible. Somehow stays in the fight. Side control now, and certainly I would think more offensive options for the bottom fighter than in the half guard. Absolutely more offensive options, because now you can just start to get away. You can just go to a wrestler stand-up. Get to your knees, pose your hands, don't allow him to get his hooks in, right? Really be aware of the hooks. But get to your hands, stand up, fight the hands, break away and escape. But it's so much more free-flowing than a half guard in the side control. Because all you need to do is just get the opponent's body up because his legs are just free to move. His legs are not controlling anything. His legs are just free, so you have more freedom to use yours. Trouble now. They say the straight moves are the ones that get there first, and it got right to the target. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape right inside his opponent's guard here, DC. You don't want to play around here too long. No, you got to either have two hands in or two hands out, or guys start to attack triangles. Well, working pretty effectively from the top here. Nice ground and pound by Teixeira. Pretty good ground and pound by him here. He told us on Thursday he needed to be more effective in these situations. Certainly effective tonight. Many people have gone away from this style of fighting. This man has embraced it, and you are seeing why he's one of the best that we've seen do it in a long time. All right, less than three minutes to go now in round three. Now he'll try to start attacking a rear naked choke from the top position. He is doing a really good job of relaxing not panicking because he's getting choked. He takes his opponent to his side to try to get the finish. Looks like his opponent's trying to turn into the choke here, but there's a lot of pressure. Yeah, notice he just took the body triangle, readjusted the lock, and now it looks like he's got it. Full guard now, DC. For the top fighter, you gotta be very careful because most submissions come from the full guard. So advance the half. Try to build posture. But if you're the bottom person, the moment your opponent tries to move to the next position, build a shield. Kick off the hips and get back to your feet. Just out of range with that right hook. And both fighters exchange in the pocket. You don't really stand. Take a head kick like this. That is such toughness to even be on his feet right now. Oh, he's got it going now. Nice connection there, DC. Another punch land. Oh, he heard a battle with the jab. Oh, and he lands another takedown here. Just doing a nice job not telegraphing his shot. Clean entries. The Olympians got to like what he sees. I mean, over and over, he gets to the legs before his opponent reacts. By beating him on the entry, now it's up to the opponent to keep up. But this guy's playing chess. His opponent's playing chess. Oh, now trying to isolate an arm, DC. He needs to move his hips back to cover. He cannot allow him on that angle. He's gonna tuck off. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. 
round. How about this fight, folks? You see, he was nearly caught in a submission there right at the end of the round, saved by the bell. So back to the stool, mentally probably not in a great place here. We'll see if he can recover and get himself back into this fight. Straight right hand, no good. Oh, big punch land. Take more of these leg kicks, you will not be able to be very active on your feet. Sound defense there as he blocks the shot. Oh! Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down now. Right. Oh, that was a really nice takedown. To share against the takedown. Oh, wow. Oh. Wow. All right, less than three minutes to go here in round four. Recovery, man, right back to his feet. Nice punch here. And they separate. All right, what do you think? Another takedown attempt here. It seems like every time he's gone to the well, it's been there tonight. When you're that successful with any one thing, why would you change it? He's going to shoot for another takedown, and I would almost be willing to bet he's going to secure it. I'll take your action. Okay. Take it down, cut him. Take it down, cut him. Over and over, he secured these takedowns. Look at him attacking that guillotine. Watch guillotine. He might get a finish here. Oh, what a beautiful, seamless transition to side mount as he counters the guillotine. Might be able to sink in a Von Flute choke here. Not tapping out tonight. Ooh, right into side control, DC. This is where you want to be now because you get to make your opponent decide. They try to turn back into you, you can attack guillotine. If they turn away to try to get to your knees, you throw your hooks in and you got all your rear choke submission. Well, he works hard to get up again here, but he looks hurt. Final seconds here. Great point. Uh, uh, you ready to fight? Ready. Here we go, fifth and final round. He has a commitment to kick it tonight, and it shows. Chin held up. His opponent's chin held up, but you do not want to be on the receiving end of those types of strikes. Oh, stuffs the takedown without issue. Huge strike. Now he's got the Muay Thai plug. He needs to start looking at the finish now because he's got his opponent very bad. Back to the feet. So inside the open part of his opponent, you gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Well, pretty good work off of the bottom here by Tishera. 
Wow, nice combination of strikes here from the top. Standing over his opponent, not unlike Muhammad Ali over Sonny Liston back oh, in the day. Oh, that is a good reference. If you're standing and your opponent's on the ground, you're doing really good work. He missed with that jab attempt there. All right, so he's letting... Oh! He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. Off the bottom. The Kimura is not the arm, it's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. But now DC trying to isolate an arm. Yep, he's using the Kimura. And he's out. Well, he's more than content to work off of his back, DC, where he has been a magician in his UFC career. All right, so there it is, the final horn, a lifetime of work, all building to this moment, and the underdog challenger comes up large with his striking game tonight. He's gonna be the new champ. I mean, he came up big in a massive spot. He was the underdog. He wasn't supposed to get this done. He relied on what got him here, the striking, to take the title from the long-reigning champion. decision is in it resides with Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score the contest. 49-45. For the winner by unanimous decision, and new undisputed UFC light heavyweight champion of the world, Nikita So just like that, we have a new UFC light heavyweight champion of the world, and it's always interesting to digest this result when we have a challenger come in and, and shake up the entire division. Especially when it's a guy like this, a guy that can talk the talk, but also walk the walk. He isn't a guy that's going, I'm so humble, I'm so cautious, I'm so respectful. No, he tells you what he's gonna do, and he gets the job done. Tonight, he becomes the king of the world, the UFC champion. Coming up next, we present this heavyweight championship fight between Junior Dos Santos and the Reed, Alistair Overeem. Junior Dos Santos and Alistair Overeem. First meeting went to Overeem. What does JDS need to do to exact some revenge here tonight? JDS needs to go forward. He needs to be more aggressive. He needs to fight and be a little more active with the jab. Get Overeem out of his comfort zone. Make him fight him and look. He's not going to strike himself instead of only waiting for Overeem to find a shot. Nice punch land in the top. Hands a big right hand early. Oh man, it ain't Dikembe Mutombo, but he is blocking all these shots coming man, this way. Get that out of here. He sees it coming. You're gonna have to mix it up. Shake that finger. Shake that finger. Beautiful punch. Got the single collar tied. Just over three minutes to go in our first round. Oh, there's the swing and there's the miss by Dos Santos. And they set. A little single collar tie there. A little slip there by the ring. Look at him chopping the wood. Chop the wood with those leg kicks. Oh, single collar tie here. Good punch. 
All right, so once again, the fighters engage in the clinch. We'll see who will have the upper hand here. Oh, that is as big a strike as he has landed thus far tonight. Big, massive shot lands. Look at how tough his opponent is, though. Still standing, still in that fight. Looks like it did stun him a little bit. Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down now. Oh, he might be out. Oh, all right, he's got the full mount now, DC, and he has proven to be a hard guy to buck off from this position. Oh, because he's so heavy. He keeps his weight down. He really does grind on you with his, with his bottom half. He doesn't do anything with his arm. His arms are free to punch. He's collecting you with his hips and his legs, making you make a determination as to whether or not you want to get grounded upon into the mat or if you're going to give your back up where he will then start to chase chokes. A lot of energy expenditure defensively if you are the bottom fighter in this equation. 26 total strikes have now landed for Junior Dos Santos. Nice. Whoa! He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Oh, he might be out. Big knee to the body. See how it goes here at the start of round two. JDS, Junior Dos Santos. And on the other side, Alistair. Oh! He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. Oh, big left hook there. Overeem is stunned. Overeem trying to grab a leg. Oh! And they separate. All right, well, he's landed some good shots tonight, but there's no three-piece, there's no soda. Oh, heavy leg kick there. You saw the knee buckle. Wow! Oh, look at him jumping in to try to get the finish. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Oh, wow, that happened quickly as the fighter reverses position there on the ground. Unbelievable position change. Wow, what a transition. Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. Oh, so an interesting decision there as he decides to stand up and relinquish the dominant position. So we call on the fight stats. Oh! Different approach from him here in round oh! And just like that, the fight is over. Oh! Woo! What a fight! You knew if he landed that weapon repeatedly, it could be a short night for his opponent, but that was just one perfectly placed strike that his opponent candidly didn't even see coming. It landed flush, and the rest, as they say, is history. Big knockout win for him here tonight. Inside the octagon, Bruce Buffer with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean is going to stop this contest at two minutes, 33 seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by knockout and still the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Junior. All right, so we hear and still tonight, our UFC heavyweight champion came in with a lot of pressure, a lot of hype, and he successfully defends the title here tonight. With all that pressure, he never changes his approach. He always does exactly what he says he wants to do, and he remains the champion in the UFC's biggest and most dangerous division.